Good morning, Staff Canteen. Welcome to Kim's. I'm Andrew Wong in the middle of the city of London. Uh, it's a Bloomberg Arcade. We're doing 360. 360 of all our friends in the area. We've got Brigadiers at the end, we've got Mika, we've got Caravan, Moya. Come in, come in. Morning guys. Welcome. On the right hand side we have our tree. Purpose built for the feng shui of the restaurant. Very important to us. We have Daniel at the bar here. Morning Dan. Morning, morning guys. Sorry about that. Security is tight in the blue bag yeah. arcade, so everyone needs a security pass. Dan, Dan was our expert barman from Italy. From Italy? Brazil. Oh, Brazil, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my family is from Spain, so it's quite near. So we stay in Europe, there is no problem at all. So what cocktail are we going to have today, uh, Dan? Any. We're going to have the Sichuan salad. Sichuan salad, that sounds like the perfect cocktail at 12.30 in the morning, uh, after a few hours of prep. See you later, Mauricio. So what Dan's making his cocktail, let's run through the menu. We have our Sichuan syrup that we do at home made in, at the house here. Which is Sichuan pepper. It tastes like Sichuan peppercorn. So the menu at Kim's is uh, divided into several sections. We've got small plates, skewers, sharing items and the core of the menu is the, uh, the roasting meat. So the roasting meat, if we look over here, we'll show you some more of it later. It's basically the Cantonese roast meat hanging up in the window over there. Um, a very long process to make them. Um, the crispy pork belly takes about a day and a half. Uh, the soy chicken, uh, it doesn't take quite so long, but again, it's a, it's a very, very um, intricate process. It's basically like sous vide cooking from 2,500 years ago. Um, and we serve it with a really delicious licorice infused soy sauce. And then the chasil, uh, which basically is uh, honey, honey barbecue pork. Um, it's marinated with about 15 or 16 different dry spices, um, lots of honey, lots of maltos, and then it's finished with um, Chinese rose wine, which gives you something really, really aromatic. How are we doing on the cocktail, Dan? Very good. Man. I like the action. You just to shake strong to get the egg white really from the top. <laughs> Miss Laney, we got introduced to Miss Laney. Miss Laney looks after all the fun of the house. Hi. Miss Laney from Brazil as well. Yes, <laughs> How are you feeling? Not too tired? Very good, very good. No, not tired no? at all. So day seven, Miss Laney is looking chirpy, which is always important. <laughs> and, and I think the important thing about this room actually is if you sit here, I mean it's 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 eleven thirty now, you're sitting there having a drink, you really don't feel like you're in the city. I mean we, I spend a lot of time in Victoria obviously um, and, and you do feel like you're definitely in a residential area. Um, but here in the middle of the city of London, actually sitting in this dining room, you really don't feel like it's um, the middle of a square mile. I think, you know, we had lunch here with my kids and my wife the other day, and it, you know, it has a really warm, warm atmosphere to it, um, which is nice. It's, 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 only, it's, the, it's the interactor of a restaurant, and sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And we've been very fortunate. Thank you, Dan. Into a mess before service. Yes, I know. Cheers. So, what's in this, Dan? That is based on our Sichuan sour syrup together with some gin, a little punch of sake to give this little, little dry punch and loads of flavor. We let it 20, 20 milliliters of the egg white with some Sichuan oil. Finish with a really strong shake to do this froth on top, and we just spray our Sichuan oil 
on the board of the glass to have the first seat. And so Sichuan Pep Corns obviously famous for the mala sensation in Chinese gastronomy. And the mala sensation is the way it combines with chili to give like a, a mouth numbing texture. Uh, so it almost feels like it's got a little bit of an electric tingle in your mouth. Delicious. Should we take you upstairs? Upstairs, here we go. Good morning, Aideen. Good morning. <laughs> so walking up now to the private dining room. It's where the city folk are gonna, gonna enjoy themselves. Do you like my pose? <laughs> Uh, Good morning. Uh, seats up to. Should have paid attention. Uh, functions up to 40 or 45, I believe. Uh, we have an array of different uh, feasting menus for large groups. Uh, and, and the dining room looks very different. Where people do hide out. Changes the uh, the room quite significantly. This is the first time I think the curtains have been shut. So imagine, imagine your your private view. You've got this entire area to yourself. Your friends, your DJ, the food. Alternative entertainment. And yeah, we're completely closed off. We've got quite a few functions already booked in between now and Christmas. Um, I think we've been quite lucky we're opening at this time of year when, when private functions are on the up. So yeah, it should be nice. It should be a really nice party atmosphere here. And if I'm really, really good, um, I'm hoping that the A1 staff party will be here. <laughs> As you can see, when it's closed off, it, it, it's looking very, very different. Alright, enough of the jibber jabber, let's go to the kitchen. This is the centerpiece of our kitchen. It is the three roasted meats, which is the honey roast chasu on the left, followed by the soy chicken, and then the crispy pork belly on the right hand side. Um, obviously, soy chicken made very, very famous by um, Hawker Chan in Singapore, but actually, a very, very uh, traditional dish steeped in history, actually, steeped in history within Chinese gastronomy. Um, and there, I was told by our good friend Mukta, who's an anthropologist, uh, that there are etchings on walls in China which, which show this process of, of poaching soy chickens and making uh, roast duck, uh, which date back to, I believe, about two, between about 2000 and 2500 years ago. So, you know, 2500 years ago, Chinese people were doing sous vide cooking, which is an incredible thing to think about. Morning, Sultan. Morning, Tommy. Morning, Ali. Morning, morning. 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 Hanging out. Hello. Chilling now. Uh, I'll block the, the staff changing room. Come close, come close. Go around, go around, go around. And we've got, we got the big boys here. We've got Max. Hi. Max is our, one of our roasting chefs. And Falk, he's doing prep 24 7 to keep up with the demand of these short soy chickens. And a new friend. Morning, right. how are you? Yeah, I'm, uh, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, good, good. So here it is. The roast pork, the crispy pork belly. Um, it's a highly technical piece of drying. So basically the meat comes in, we dry rub it, uh, and then we put bicarb 
rice vinegar and lemon juice all over the skin. We rub that on and then we dry it in front of a, a highly technical piece of equipment known as a fan um, until the, the, the skin goes really, really quite hard, quite hard. And after that, it will basically come into this thing, which is a roasting oven. But I'm, I'm five foot, 11 and a half, stroke six foot. <laughs> and this is the oven. And obviously I need to be a bit taller because I can't actually get into it. So, three, Chef! <laughs> so, this oven, the beauty of it is that the meat hangs inside. And luckily we're not roasting at the moment because it gets up to about 360 degrees inside. Um, and yeah, there's quite a lot of smoke. There's a lot of smoke in this place. But luckily, 2018, modern day restaurant, never seen it before in my life, aircon units in kitchens. Even the KP has got air conditioning. Morning! Wave of the future. Um, modern day sort of chaos. I don't know. This, this is what happens when we turn it on. So it's not it's not on at the moment. So we can start cooking it. We cook it at a low temperature first. And Young is highly technical with his temperatures. He calls it a low to medium fire. <laughs> he uses his hand as a digital gauge, and we leave it in there for about ten minutes. And afterwards, we get the we get the uh, we get we get a, a torture equipment. They will do the jumping. After we've uh, after we've cooked it at a low to medium heat for like ten minutes, we use this piece of equipment. Yeah, so we get them the meat and we stab it all over. And basically, what it does is it stops the skin from souffleing up like a traditional uh, roast pork. And after that, we turn up the heat to about three. 360, 370, and then we make the pork really, really black, and then we scrape it off with uh, with more of these torture tools, which is this one. But this is what we use to scrape all the, the skin off. Like, then we put oil all over it, and we put it back in again for another blast, like that. So you, you want to see? Let, I'll show you how big the fire is. Yeah. Look inside. So that's on a low flame. So we turn it up. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So it's pretty hot. Chef's out there. You're gonna mess around in this kitchen. You're going there. You're going in there. I'm just turn you now. So normally people are very well behaved in this kitchen. Thanks, Chef. Thank you. You come back through. Stuff changing quarters. I love having hair, but I don't leave the house. Jimmy, how's life? Hi, Kim. Fantastic. He's got some piece of equipment that is way too modern for my liking. Yeah, we use pestle and mortars and, and torturing tools. Jimmy's they using robots. Robots. I'll teach you one day, Chef, don't worry. <laughs> Find me the tweets. But I'm here. Tommy's preparing a walk for service this afternoon. And then if we get up and close and personal with the meats, I mean, you can tell, like, this is this is all maltose and honey. It's absolutely delicious. Take a look at the skin. 
回とかそういうのSonny, who has a bakery um, in Chinatown and in um, in London, um, he, he, it's his thing. You know, that's his speciality. That's what his family had been doing for 60 years that they've been in London. And so it was very much about working with him to give people a taste of of traditional Cantonese desserts. Um, you know, they're they're different. <laughs> I, mean, I grew up with, with Chinese desserts. And so, you know, they're, they're pretty much a, a normal staple for me. But, but to people who may not have interacted with, with Cantonese or Chinese dessert before, sometimes the textures, you know, the egginess, the, you know, the, 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 the firmness of the custard or the, the, the lightness of the bun or the, the pineapple crust, it can be, um, it can be uh, you know, a new, a new sensation. Hopefully people will like it. Uh, anyway, Max is going to make us a few treasures. So the three treasures basically means all three meats. <laughs> three is an important number because three in Chinese um, is a uh, what's the word? The word when something sounds like something else. Basically, it's a, it's a similar word to the word in Chinese for birth. So three is a lucky number. Eight is a lucky number because eight um, has a similar sound in Chinese to the word for prosperity. Uh, nine is another lucky number. Uh, big no-nos in Chinese superstition are four because it's a similar kind of sound to the word for death. Um, and 13, I don't know why it's 13. So actually, actually, if you go to Hong Kong now, you go into high-rise buildings, normally there will be no level four and no, no level 13. So you'll go from level two, no, you'll go from level three to level five and you'll go from level 12 to 14. If you look at that crackling, it's um, you know it's a very unique type of crackling. Um, it, it's it's not it's not a Sunday roast crackling. This is very much uh, specific to to Chinese gastronomy, uh, which is why which is why we wanted to celebrate this in this restaurant. So basically, all that that the charring is because the dry rub that we put on, besides the dried garlic, dry star anise. Uh, dried ginger, there's also a lot of sugar in there. Uh, basically, it's curing the meat. So, it cures the meat to basically give you this finish, which is basically half ham, half roast meat, um, which is very unique. Very unique. You know, Max isn't messing around this morning, he's, uh, he's making sure that he's perfect. Personally, 
I don't mind eating that part. Personally, I quite like that charred stuff, um, but it's not to everyone's liking, so Max is taking it off this morning. And I should do 360 of the dining room. The total of the restaurant seats 120. Uh, downstairs, 50. <laughs> How many do you reckon sit down here, Dan? Uh, Andy? I, 80? No way. Like 60, somewhere between 60 and 80. Exactness. We need precision here. <laughs> somewhere between 60 and 80. Now you have the choice, you know, you can sit down here, or you can sit in the. Uh, After dinner drinks, come to the bar, relax. Again, it's not it's not meant to be a kind of um, you know a really macho kind of crowded mayhem kind of bar. It's just meant to be somewhere where people just chill out and relax. And a lot of the a lot of the decor I always said to the designers is about creating an environment where people can relax in. You know, in Victoria, it's it's about kind of that homeliness, homeliness, and giving people that. Look. That real X factor of, of, of walking into someone's home, and here it's about an extension of that. So the tree is about trying to bring the garden into the dining room. You've got a lot of natural light coming into the room, and, and everything that we do here is really about trying to make people feel comfortable. Um, you know, very much is nearly ready, so it's nearly lunchtime for me. Um, come by, have some roast meat. Uh, I'll be here, Max will be here, Chef Yong will be here, we'll all be here waiting to look after you.